Welcome to Peace Online Worship for August 30th, 2020. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll refrain from using the microphone because I can normally talk loud enough where everyone can hear me. So, but if you can't, just raise your hand. Uh, once again, God has provided us with a glorious day so that we can hold outdoor worship. Thanks be to God for that. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who came early this morning and helped get the. Uh, the Clavinova set up and the sound system. Thanks to Nathan. Thanks to Chris for coming to play. And thanks to everyone that came in to help set up this morning. Uh, that's great that we can get together and do this. Uh, a couple of announcements I have. Um, immediately following worship this morning, we are having a special congregational meeting. Uh, so stick around for that. It should start around 945. We have uh, our treasurer is here to give us an update on our financial situation. I know some of you have had questions on that. And we want to move forward as far as returning to, you know, we live in Wisconsin. We're not going to be able to be out here in December. Um, we're going to try to be outdoor worshiping as long as we can. But eventually we want to transfer back into the sanctuary. And uh, I know there's some committees here that are interested in getting started up and we can try to figure out it's it's mainly going to be a brainstorming session and we already have a council meeting set up for tuesday september 8th via zoom to discuss any ideas that come forward today so um shout out your ideas when it's time for the meeting and everything will be discussed and talked about and we can keep on worshiping whether it be outdoors or indoors all right um uh, also for next sunday I'm excited to announce that we are going to be celebrating communion for the first time. We found a way to do it safely amongst everyone where, where um, you know, your individual um, wafer and wine will be safely distributed amongst everyone and uh, might not taste the best, might not taste as good as the bread and wine that we uh, serve in the church for communion, but it's all about the meal and not how it tastes. So. We're excited to be able to serve communion next Sunday for the first time since March, right? Yeah. Well, other than online, and we did it ourselves. So, okay, that's all I have. I know Pastor Lou has one announcement. I do need the mic. Is that loud enough for everybody? You good? Uh, we had our first uh, youth event yesterday. And uh, we had we had quite a few there. Very impressive uh, participation. But let me say that I am so impressed with the quality of our kids. Whether they were there or not, we have great kids in this church. And so we can't wait to start a uh, ministry that really engages them in the work of Christ. So we're all excited about that. All right. Mr. Liturgist, if you are ready, let's do our call to worship. Yo, yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heaven and on earth is yours, O oh Lord, and this is your kingdom. 
We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people are made great and given strength. O oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Psalm chapter 26. Declare me innocent, O Lord, for I have acted with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart, for I am always aware of your unfailing love, and I have lived according to your truth. I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. I hate the gatherings of those who do evil, and I refuse to join in with the wicked. I wash my hands to declare my innocence. I come to your altar, O Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. And now our prayer of confession. Heal our hurt, Lord. Fix what is broken in this nation. As in the days of Ezekiel, remove our cold, stony heart. And as you shower us with divine love, God forgive us when we, when we feel a sense of righteous superiority. Forgive us when we respond with silent hatred to those around us, especially when we don't see how they deserve your mercy. Forgive us when our anger is based on disagreement and not founded in love. Forgive us when we rely on our strength, only on our wisdom, only on our power. In the righteous name of Jesus, amen. So hear this good news. Our God is gracious and loving and offers to all the sweet, sweet sounding, amazing grace. Thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. One of the things that uh, we take advantage of here when we're outside is that we can have a discussion. And so this has been a part of our outdoor worships and I'd like to invite you now as we share together in a discussion. Um, last week, uh, we talked about what the mission of the church is and what we should be about as a congregation. But what about that life together? We live with one another. We live in a society next to other people who are not part of this faith community. Let me begin by asking a question of, 
if you were to make a list of rules on how to live within a Christian community, what would you add to that list? I'm so, I, love God? Yes, love God. What else? Rules for living together in a community of Christ. Yeah. Do unto others. Do unto others. The golden rule. Yes, Mike. Show compassion to uh, those who are suffering. Show compassion to those who are suffering. Yes. Yep. Respect. Respect very important just let your behavior reflect that you love god. let your behavior reflect that you love god very good yes then i'm sorry reach out to others reach out to others thank you very good thank you for sharing so this is a hypothetical question. We're not gonna be required to do this, but here in the United Church of Christ, we talk a lot about covenant, where we agree to do certain things, either informally or formally. Would you be willing to sign a covenant with those rules of behavior on it? Okay, okay. Now, how would that list be different if instead of talking about life within the Christian community, we were talking about our lives within the greater society? Are there things that we would add or take away for rules of living within the greater society? Yeah, Sarah. I think acceptance needs to be added to the list. Acceptance. Let's add acceptance because not everybody has signed on for the covenant of community living that we all agree to. Anybody else? So here's a tough question. And it's a question that we talked about when we talked about opening the sanctuary for worship. What if people don't comply? Well, what if people within our community of faith here decide not to love or decide not to love God or to, uh, to reach out in compassion to others? What do we do? Yep. Be an example. Be an example. I like that. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, Mike. Well, we're not really in a role of compulsion. We're not really there to, uh, you know, if it's not a, if it's not an endangerment to another person. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're we're not in the business of compulsion, making people do things. In fact, before the meeting today. Uh, I had planned to share a scripture from 2 Corinthians where, where the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Corinth and really talking about generosity and stewardship and giving. But what he says, I think, can apply to all areas of our Christian life. And it says, do nothing reluctantly or under compulsion. And the flip side is that, of that is that we should not force people to do things in which they would respond reluctantly or under compulsion. It has to come from the heart. All right, well, thank you for your discussion. We will move on and Bob will share the New Testament reading. The New Testament, <clears throat> New Testament reading today comes from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection outdo one another in showing honor do not lag in zeal be ardent in spirit serve the lord rejoice in hope be patient in suffering persevere in prayer contribute to the needs of the saints extend hospitality to strangers bless those who persecute you 
Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as, as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals into, on their heads. Do not over, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thank you, Bob. We're going to uh, share a time of prayer together this morning. And uh, I want to encourage if you ever have concerns that you want to share with our church family, you are always welcome to do so. And in fact, before church, uh, Chris Melton shared a couple of very important concerns that we will remember. And that is her son-in-law's daughter, Faith, is uh, undergoing an emergency C-section today. And uh, so we need to remember faith in prayer. Also, uh, her son-in-law himself, Jamie, is undergoing surgery on Wednesday. So let's remember them and the family in prayer, not just today, throughout the week. As I mentioned uh, last week, we have had a number of uh, uh, people pass away and um, a few days ago, we had uh, Lee Mosher's funeral, and uh, let's pray for Darlene and the family that she would feel the presence of God and comfort in this time. Bob Timke also is uh, experiencing some health problems, and uh, please lift him up in your prayers. Are there other concerns that you would like to mention to the family today? Let's remember Kenosha. Um, that will uh, be part of our uh, message today, but uh, let's remember that community, their leaders. Let's pray for our children that are gonna be returning to school this next week, that they stay safe and be free of this terrible virus that has stricken us this year. Thank you, Bob, that, that's important. Yeah, school starting. Uh, let's keep the school systems in prayer and our kids and teachers and other staff. All right, then let's bow our heads together. And, and as we pray, let's take a moment to lift each of those concerns up individually. And then I will voice our pastoral prayer together. So let's bow our heads together. Our dear God, we sometimes forget that you are a constant presence in our lives. Sometimes we forget to lean on your compassion and on your grace and on your comfort. But in times of stress or when things are really critical in our lives, maybe we pray a little more at those times. And yet your presence is always there. We do pray at this time for all those requests that were mentioned this morning and so many more. Some of us are shy. Some of us don't think that our concerns are worth mentioning or sometimes they're 
too private to mention, but dear God, there are so many things going on in the lives of our people right now. Indeed, there are a few things in my life that uh, my family has been lifting up in prayer and we just pray that you would intervene in a very real way that we would know that you are a God of love and power and compassion and comfort. We pray for our kids. We pray for Faith and Jamie and we pray for Kenosha. We pray for our young people as they prepare for school and school systems. They're not going to get it all right, but they're really working hard to make it as close to right as they can. Dear God, pray, we pray that you would continue to bless our congregation and our fellowship. We love you so much and we love each other. Help us to extend that love beyond the boundaries of our congregation. And we will give you the praise and glory and honor. Be with us now too, as we pray that prayer that you taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just want to take this time to remind everyone that our offering plate is over here on the table. I'd like to thank everyone for giving generously throughout this whole year and this pandemic. Um, and then you can also, for those of you who are already on the direct deposit or uh, thank you for that. And you can also, just so everyone understands that we can give online as well, if we're not able to attend the worship service. So thank you very much for your generosity and we will continue to have this church family grow. Amen. i 
salvation, restoration, and justice for these sins. Lay us bare, God, break us to pieces until we are joined together. We are joined together, God has won. Let the sun shine on Are tensions in this country higher because of the pandemic? This is the most polarizing situation I've ever seen in our country. And we've seen a lot. I remember the Vietnam War, people were classified as hawks or doves. 9-11 raised a lot of questions about what our proper response as a nation should be. And now it seems that our national response to racial injustice and violence has been maybe just as polarizing as it has always been, but the extreme response from a lot of people just seems to have added tension, maybe because of the pandemic. Responses and counter responses become violent and more extreme. And our fragile country is not just more polarized but responses are filled with anger and hate. Social psychologist Philip Zambaro has shown that, and I quote, good people can be induced, seduced, and initiated into behaving in evil ways, especially, but not only, when they submit to an authority that sanctions violence in particular situations. Albert Speer was Hitler's chief architect and chief designer of armaments in World War II. He said this in his memoir called Inside the Third Reich, it is hard to know the devil when he puts his hand on your shoulder. But we're impervious to that. We would never be persuaded to misbehave, would we? Normally when we read the words that Bob read from the book of Romans, it might just get a shrug of our shoulders saying, well, of course we're gonna love and of course we're gonna shun what is evil. That's what we do, we're Christians, right? Of course. This is what people of faith always do. Chapter 12, which we begin with, that the apostle Paul gives to the Roman church about what we do in consequence of God's great grace to all people, Jews and Gentiles alike, which was a big issue for him in his time. God is gracious and we've all messed up. We've all sinned. And yet even at that moment, God sent his son Jesus for all of us. Therefore, and that's the key word here. Therefore, this needs to happen in your lives. Love, don't repay evil with evil. That's how we live together. Let me summarize what this New Testament passage talks about in three basic areas. And the first thing is Paul tells us to behave based on who you are in Christ. Who you are right now is really dependent upon a lot of things your genetics, right? Your upbringing, your experiences in life, your family, your education, how much money you've got. But when we claim Christ in our lives, who we are on the inside changes dramatically. I would say that needs to be the primary factor in our personhood, who we are, 
depends on Christ and what God has done through Christ in our lives. So let me ask you a very important question here. How are you different because of what God has done through Christ? For a lot of people, there might not be a whole lot of difference. It should not be so for us. The second thing I want to talk about is what you think. When you read the news, how do you respond? What's your gut level reaction? And then what do you think about it? I tell you so much of what I see, I read and I get sick and I weep and I get angry. And I don't know where to draw this line, but my anger just almost spills over into hatred and I quit trying to understand. In fact, my reaction sometimes is so all consuming. This past week, we lost a wonderful actor, Chadwick Bosman. And my initial response was, who did this? How unjust? Cancer did this, but I was tempted and I really wanted to point a finger. What do you think? How do you respond? What's your gut level reaction? How we respond needs to be transformed by what God has done through Christ. First Peter puts it in a very similar way. Do not repay evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called that you might inherit a blessing. So what's your emotional response when you see violence and injustice in this world? Our response should never be one that is not perfectly consistent with our calling as children of God. One of the parts that hurts so much is that in the news, we are catalyzed into those violent reactions and it's almost as if some of us believe that the constitution gives us a right to hate and respond with hatred and violence and that is certainly not the case and it is certainly not the case for people who call themselves children of god but the last thing i want to focus on is what you do who you are what you think but what do you do so let me ask the question first, what have you done in the last week or in the last month that you would not have done without that therefore part that we read today? Well, we wouldn't have come to church, right? But that can be largely a social thing. Are you here because of what God has done in your life through Christ? Or are you done because that's what you do when you're part of a church family? It might seem like an easy thing to answer, but I don't think it is. What am I trying to do in my own life? Because of what God has done for me and only because of that. Who I am, what I think, but what I am doing now just because God has forgiven me and transformed my life. So let's reread that passage and try to reimagine that what we are talking about, we are talking about because of what Christ has done for us. I don't think we need to leave here and be exactly the same kind of people that arrived here. Let's let the good news of the gospel transform each and every one of us as we move forward in spite of, or maybe because of what's going on in the world, but let that power of God change us. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, but hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. 
rejoice in hope, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, but weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly, and do not claim to be more than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Let me close with this verse. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May that be our life together. Amen. Thank you, Chris. And even though most of us are not going because we've got a meeting, go in peace. Amen.